Tom here from Lawrence Systems and Unify has been busy writing updates and bug fixes for the Unify 6.x series controller. I say 6.x because there's actually been several updates and we waited on a few of them because, well, they didn't go as well as we had expected. And I say we because I'm talking about the community and I do talk specifically a lot about Riley, who is CEO of Hostify. Hostify provides cloud controllers that they maintain for people who want to maintain their, or don't want to maintain, I should say, their Unify controller. You can let Hostify handle it for you. Yes, there's an offer code down below. I'm a big fan of uh, the Hostify product. We recommend it to a lot of people. Also, Riley being much more forthcoming with information than Unify themselves are, this post was just um just from the other day. They finished updating 1,676 Unify servers to version 6.2.25. Matter of fact, I've also updated mine to 6.2.26, and that accounts for over a hundred thousand Ubiquiti devices connected to the servers. And it's working quite well, except a few little things, and that's why I want to cover some of the changes and some of the bigger changes that came from this update. Now, one thing to keep in mind is Unify is kind of alone in her category. I've done talks before about Unify competitors. It's not easy to switch away from them because there's not a lot of companies that offer you a self-hosted controller option that works at the scale Unify does and doesn't have a bunch of, well, recurring licensing fees attached to it. So for those of you wondering, why are you still using Unify? There's a lot of reasons over a hundred thousand devices are in Hostify alone. And we know a ton of people that, you know, have their own controllers and I've been using Unify for much the same reason. It's hard to compete with that. Uh, there's just not a lot of other companies that don't want you to attach to a, a recurring license fee in their cloud. All right, before we get too far off topic and dive into these details, if you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you want to hire a sure project, including Unify Consulting, there's a Hire Us button right at the top. We're not a reseller of the products, but you can hire us to help configure and set up your network and integrate all of it together. If you want to support this channel other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services that we talk about on this channel. And obviously we do talk a lot about Unify. That's why I wanted to mention neither me nor Riley are under any direct affiliation with Unify. We just are integrators. He happens to sell a platform to host it. We just do a lot of consulting on it. Now, this is the Unify Controller 6.217, and there's a lot of things on there, but the first one made me chuckle a little bit. Unify, and granted, it's absolutely their right to do so, they kind of advertise if you don't have a UDM Pro that you should purchase a UDM Pro. And I thought it was funny that they didn't allow it to be dismissed when they first came out with the 6.2 version, I think is when it showed up. And now they finally added a feature to dismiss the advertisement in the controller. Now, I don't really see this as much of a big deal. And if they're trying to push more product, more the power to them. We do not, though, really recommend any of the Unify routing equipment because it really falls flat when you have any advanced routing needs. For basic routing needs and home users, yeah, it probably works great. But for businesses that want some of the advanced use cases, I don't feel that the USG line or the UDM or the UDM Pro line of Unify routing equipment is really all that great. We really focus on using their switches and access points. So that is the perspective that I come from. That being said, a question that came, comes up quite a bit is the layer three switching and routing for static routes. I There's a few switches now that support this and they're slowly working on it. I don't know, it's to me not in the best solution. So if you have a need for that, I'm still not usually recommending the Unify switches, but I'm happy to see that they're still developing and moving forward with that feature on there. And maybe some point I'll revisit it and uh, try to see how good it actually is and get some statistics on it of how fast it can actually do that type of routing. Cool they have it, that they're, but it feels more like they're checking a marketing click box than actually taking the time to build really good and proper uh, layer three routing rules that you could do within the particular switches. But they have a lot of little things over here that I will leave links to all this so you can read through all the details. This though is more improvements that came with the 6.2.2.3. Then we have the 6.2.25, and then finally the 6.2.26, which really just fixed some uh, IPsec VPN problems. So the last few minor updates were not a lot to talk about. Most of the big changes happened in these ones here. Now, that being said, um, let's actually look at those changes. And the big one is going to be the user interface and a terrible user experience they created with this. Let me explain this really quick. 
the Unify interface has been similar, but enhanced over time. They've been refining it. I actually think this is very usable. I can go to my devices and manage them relatively easily without much headache. It works quite well. Matter of fact, one of the things I like and thought it was weird they took the time to change this where is the new switch. And one of the reasons we updated, this is the new Unify aggregation switch. And, uh, you know, because it's got 25 gig, they did some recoloring to show which ports are plugged in. We only have a couple things plugged in right now. So they've been changing some of the nuances. When you switch to the new UI, which we'll switch to, it's also weird because they changed the color of it. Um, but they're really minor changes. Now, this UI obviously is very functional and I can do things like this, but Unify is insistent on bugging people to get to the new user interface. Um, one thing I want to show is like the clients real quick here. This is a very functional screen where we look up clients, see where they're connected. It tells me what port they're plugged into. So I can see that this is plugged into Studio Lab 10G, or this is plugged into Front uh, 24 is the name of the switch, port number 20. This is really nice, concise information, even with the little search here so we can find things. I, I like that this is on here, but Going to settings, user interface, and after a lot of people update, it drops you into the new user interface. And this is where me and Riley started the conversation of basically this interface is just hot garbage. I, I don't know any way to describe it than a positive light. First problem, of course, once you dismiss the advertisement for the UDM Pro, I'm left with just this because I don't use the USG. So I just get this weird blobbed interface here that just shows me some access points. They did update the topology here, which makes it look a little sharper. But if you do in display options, show all clients, once again, doesn't let you zoom out far enough to be particularly useful. Um, so that's not that's not really doing much. And the devices, let's look at those. All right, and find the Unify aggregation switch, but it's no longer a pop out window so I can set things side by side when I want to look at things, which makes this not very useful. And also one of the things that's uh, missing in here, you go to device, they've tried to consolidate things in these little pull downs, but not all the functionality is in here. For example, I can forget device, but it, they remove the ability for me to move it. Now you have to kind of switch back and forth between the two interfaces in order to make that work, which means pretty much stay in the old interface. The other thing that is interesting is if you stay in this interface too long, one of the things Riley had pointed out as he noticed with several of his clients, if few people are using this too long, it seems to occasionally crash the controller and you just have to restart the service. Strange behavior that a new interface would cause the back end to crash, but um, this is what Unify has been working on with it. But there are a couple of reasons you may need to go here and I want to cover those. That's why I switched to the new interface. One is the Wi Fi. When you go over the Wi-Fi, you can see it actually lists the different networks right here. And when we edit a network, like we'll go ahead and edit this one here. When we go down to advanced, they have a Wi-Fi scheduler. So that's cool they have that, but you can only access the scheduler to make adjustments via the new interface. Everything else is done in parity, so you can do pretty much all the other functions in the old interface except for this. But if you set it in here, it still works when you go to the other interface. So that's one thing you may need to switch for. And the other one's going to be data retention. Uh, they move that over. So if we go here to, I believe it's an advanced feature, and we type in retention. And it'll, there we go. It'll bring us down to the data retention. This has been removed from the primary interface and moved over into only the new interface. So it's kind of strange. And the really confusing part though, is when you try to build some of the new networking, uh, it's kind of missing when you do add network, enable network name, the router, it only lists these. Uh, it doesn't seem to have the normal VLAN settings. It's a little bit more confusing how they did this in the new interface. So for the most part, I'd recommend definitely going with and staying in the classic settings, unless there's something you need, such as setting the data retention or that. So we'll go back over here to classic settings, go down here, get rid of the interface. Yes, deactivate it, refresh the page, and you'll go back to normal like it was before where you actually have some usable interface could take a second to load. Hey, look, there we go. Shows all the switches, shows my experience that it probably thinks would be better if I had one of their unified gateways, but I can assure you it would not be improved if we had that. But other than that, we go back over here like the settings and it still brings you back to the same old school network interface that you're used to. If you've been using Unify for a while, that is obviously much more functional. But among things they still have that are broken, the VLAN is missing here. And their answer is, oh, you should be using the new interface for it. But I, I don't really find that to be too big of a deal because you can just go 
set it right here. Now, main reason we updated support for WPA3 connections, support for the new Wi-Fi 6, and support for the uh, Unify Aggregation Pro Switch are the big reasons we moved over to it. So I would definitely say if you're interested in upgrading, always back up first, have a snapshot, everything ready in case you have to reload it. But it's okay to load the new version. This is a message we get a lot of, you know, hey, Tom, have you moved all the way up to that latest release of 6.2.26? And me and Riley have both decided we've you know, we're going to go ahead and move over to it. And we haven't had any real problems since we did it. All of our customers are still online. We only have, I think right now, one customer left that's using a USG and that upgraded perfectly fine. So we really haven't run into any particular scenarios or problems with the latest version. Everything seems to be going well, as long as the users aren't going in there. And seeing as we're the users for ours, as in my staff is the one using it to manage our clients, we never use the new UI, but Riley obviously has been sending notices out to a lot of his user base because he's managing your controllers and saying, look, just stay away from that new user interface. So yes, upgrade, go ahead and stay away from the new user interface unless you're trying to set a you know time schedule on your Wi-Fi, go in there just for that, switch it back, and uh, hopefully your upgrade path will go easy. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or things you want to learn more about regarding Unify, leave some uh, comments down below or head over to our forums where you can have a more in-depth discussion. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly. So check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.